In about 250 million years from now, Africa, the Americas, and Eurasia will come together in a colossal collision. Once this collision occurs, a new supercontinent will take form, reshaping the face of the Earth once again, just like Pangaea did millions of years ago. But what did life on Earth look like at the time of Pangaea? From a much hotter climate to raining reptiles, Pangaea was actually a pretty dangerous place to live. Stay with us till the end to learn everything about Earth at the time of Pangaea, because it might just be a look into the future of Earth's landscape. Back in ancient times, Earth looked a little bit different than it does today. Picture this. Instead of the continents spread out across the globe as we know them now, there was one massive supercontinent known as Pangaea. This supercontinent existed during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras around 335 million years ago. But how did these land masses actually come together? Well, it involved a lot of migration and a lot of collision. The formation of Pangaea took a long time to develop and involved a very complex process. Millions of years ago, convection within the Earth's mantle caused new material to keep rising to the surface between the tectonic plates at what are known as rift zones. Land masses and eventually continents formed then moved away from the rift zones as new material emerged. Eventually, the continents migrated towards each other, gradually combining into one massive supercontinent, Pangaea. The northwestern part of Pangaea, known as Gondwana, was an ancient continent near the South Pole which collided with the southern part of the Euro-American continent. This collision resulted in the formation of a single massive piece of land. As time went on, the Angaran continent, located near the North Pole, started moving southward and merged with the northern part of the growing Euro-American continent. And voila! While Pangaea formed and covered about one-third of the Earth's surface, there was one landmass that remained separate from it, Cathasia. Cathasia consisted of the northern and southern regions of China, but never became a part of the supercontinent. Once fully formed, Pangaea dominated the land, while the remaining area was covered by an immense ocean known as Panthalassa. However, the question remains, what creatures lived on Pangaea? So here's the deal. When Pangaea, this massive supercontinent, was forming, it had some unintended consequences, especially for marine life. Geologists believe that Pangaea played a part in the mass extinction event that occurred at the end of the Permian period, especially in the marine world. Here's what happened. As Pangaea was coming together, the availability of shallow water habitats started to decline. Additionally, the land barriers that formed prevented cold polar waters from mixing with warm tropical waters. This resulted in a decrease in the levels of dissolved oxygen in the remaining warm water habitats. And guess what? This drop in oxygen levels is thought to be a major factor in the staggering 95% reduction in the diversity of marine species during that time. But hold on, the story doesn't end there. When Pangaea eventually broke apart, it had the opposite effect. As the land masses separated, more shallow water habitats emerged because the overall length of the shoreline increased. And guess what else? The channels that formed between the smaller land masses allowed warm and cold ocean waters to mix creating new and diverse habitats. Now let's shift our focus to the land. When Pangaea broke apart, it caused a separation of plant and animal populations. But as we know, life always finds a way. Over time, the species on the newly isolated continents developed unique adaptations to their new environments. This led to an increase in biodiversity as different regions fostered the evolution of distinct life forms. So there you have it. The formation and breakup of Pangaea had some serious effects on both marine and terrestrial life. While it brought about a decline in marine species diversity during its formation, it later paved the way for the emergence of new habitats and increased biodiversity during its breakup. So now let's look into the creatures that lived on and around Pangaea. Generally speaking, Pangaea formed towards the end of the Paleozoic era and had fully broken apart into the modern continents we know today by the end of the Mesozoic era. During the Paleozoic era, there was a huge variety of life in the areas that lived near the early continents. We are talking about plants, animals, bacteria, and more, all thriving in those shallow waters. But when Pangaea came into the picture during the Permian period, those once abundant shallow seas started to dwindle. 
This was a big climate change for the life forms that depended on those warm, shallow waters. Life had to adapt to survive. One of the ways it did that was by evolving eggshells that could withstand drier conditions. Amphibians also adapted by developing the ability to spend at least part of their lives out of the water, although they still needed to lay their eggs in water. But it was the reptiles that stole the show with their eggshells and skins that could handle the dry conditions. As Pangaea started to break apart, birds and mammals were ready to take over the scene with their handy traits. Ever heard of Traversodontidae? These animals had two front horns and were about four meters long. And then we have the Shringosaurus indicus, another unique critter that called Pangaea home. The first beetles and cicadas also made their appearances during this time. However, it was during the late Triassic period, towards the end of Pangaea's existence, when many reptiles started to thrive. This is when the first dinosaur stepped onto the scene. Unfortunately, when it comes to marine life, we don't have a wealth of information since fossils from the Panthalassa Ocean are quite scarce. But it is believed that ammonoids, brachiopods, sponges, and cephalopods were some of the creatures that lived in those waters. These animals have certainly adapted and evolved over the years. As for plants, it was the gymnosperms that dominated the scene during Pangaea's time. These plants were replacing the spore-producing plants that were prevalent before. But life on Pangaea didn't limit itself to just one type of habitat. It spread everywhere. Oceans, lakes, ponds, rivers, caves, you name it. On dry land, there was a whole range of life forms, including bacteria, fungi, plants, insects, as well as amphibians, reptiles, saurians, early mammals, and the very first birds. This incredible variety of life evolved over hundreds of millions of years, technically billions if we count the earliest life forms. And you know the best part? It's still evolving. Now let's move on to the climate during this time. Surprisingly, the climate was much hotter than what we experience now, with temperatures about 20 degrees Celsius higher during the summer. Additionally, the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere were 5 to 20 times greater than they are today. Quite a hothouse, right? Scientists also found that the frequency of rainfall varied depending on the latitude. In the tropical zone, where a group of mammal-like animals called cynodonts lived, there were monsoon-like rains twice a year. However, in the temperate regions farther north, another group of reptiles called Procolophonids thrived, and they experienced major rains only once a year. It turns out that this difference in rainfall patterns played a crucial role in determining where these animals lived. You might be wondering why rainfall was so important for these creatures. Well, it all comes down to water. The mammals needed access to water-rich areas to survive, so the availability of water played a decisive role in shaping their habitats. In areas where water was scarce, the reptiles had a competitive advantage over mammals. They were already well adapted to such conditions and had found their niche, so they didn't need to migrate into the equatorial regions. But then Pangaea broke apart. Just as it formed through the movement of new material away from rift zones, it was the same mechanism that caused the supercontinent to separate. There was a weak point in the Earth's crust, and scientists believe this was where it all began. At this point of weakness, magma from the depths of the Earth's mantle surfaced, giving birth to a volcanic rift zone. Over time, this rift zone expanded and grew larger, forming a basin. And that's when the magic started happening. Pangaea began to disassociate, the movement of tectonic plates caused by the convection of the Earth's mantle played a significant role in this process. Slowly but surely, the supercontinent that once united the world's land masses broke up into the continents we know today. But as we know, it won't last forever. <laughs>